Number one, these equations model the vertical position in feet above the ground of a point at the end of a wind, windmill blade. For each function, indicate the height of the windmill and the length of the blades. So when you did these windmill problems, um, the height of the windmill was um, where it's at at its center and that was equal to the midline. So our height is going to be equal to the midline. So in this first one, the height is 10 feet. In the second one, the height is 20 feet. And in the third one, the height is 15 feet. And then the length of the blade is equal to the amplitude or the number multiplied in front of the function. So in the first one, the blade is five feet. In the second one, the blade is eight feet. And in the third one, the blade is four feet. Number two, which expression takes the same value as cosine of theta when theta is zero, pi over two, pi, and three pi over two? So you can see all of these answer choices are versions of the sine function. So if we take a look at um, the sine and the cosine function, remember that sine and cosine are nearly identical. Um, so the cosine function does this. Okay, it starts at its max and then goes down to a min and back. And then the sine function starts at its middle, okay, and then it goes up back down something similar to that. So they're just phase shifts of each other. If we slide the um, sine function backwards, you end up exactly on the cosine function. So this value of sine when sine hits its max, um, which is actually when cosine is zero. So this angle right here is the angle of pi over two. So if we move the sine function back or to the left, pi over two units, it ends up the same as the cosine, and that would be B. So this theta plus pi over two on the inside here shifts our function to the left, pi over two units. Number three, the, um, they give you the graph of a trig function. Which equation represents this trig function? So if we take a look, we can see that at pi over four, this is at a maximum. And then three pi over four, it's at its middle. So when you're looking at a maximum point, you're looking for a cosine function or a phase shift of a cosine function. If you're looking at a midline value, then you're looking at a sine function for where you write it. And so if we look here, um, when we look in these sine functions, we have nothing shifted in this first one. So that's not going to be our function because that would have started at a middle right at zero. And this letter C has a sine function, but it's a pi over four phase shift where this sine function is a three pi over four. So that's not going to work. So it must be a cosine function. And so then you can see that these two cosine functions have pi over four. So if we want to shift our cosine function to the right pi over four units, that would be a minus pi over four on the inside of our function. And then of course this two is the amplitude. So from the midline um, to the max or to the min is two units. Number four, the vertical position of a point at the tip of a windmill blade in feet is given by this function. Um, and here, theta is the angle of rotation of that windmill. So how long is the windmill blade? And explain how you know. So remember that the blade is equal to the amplitude. So the blade equals two feet, which is equal to the amplitude. And then what is the height of the windmill? Remember the height of the windmill is um, the midline. And so we see that this number 11 is added to the sine function. So the height is 11 feet. And that's because of the midline. 
And then where is the point P when theta equals zero? So if we look at plugging in theta equals zero into this function, um, we'd have zero plus pi over two. So we'd just have pi over two. And the sine function, which is the Y value. So what is the Y value at pi over two? And the Y value is one. So this is gonna be two times sine of pi over two is one. So it's gonna be 11 plus two which is 13 feet or at its maximum um, height, right? So 11 plus the amplitude. So if you think about the windmill, the windmill blade is two feet long and it's starting at 11. So this height is 11 feet. So if the windmill blade is here, it's going to be 11 feet plus two. So 11 feet plus two feet of the blade equals that 13. So that's another way to get to it too. Number five, explain how you can use the unit circle to find point P that has an X coordinate um, of cosine of 23 pi over four. So on the unit circle, this angle here is pretty close to pi, right? Because pi would be equal in 24 to 24 pi over 24. And this is 23 pi over four. So that's gonna be really, 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 really close to um, pi. And um, so that would be where it's gonna be at on the unit circle is really close to pi. So it's gonna be really close to the same X value as pi. So the unit, so when we estimate it, our, if we're at pi here, right? So if we're at this ordered pair on the unit circle, that's the point negative one, zero. So the cosine of pi is equal to negative one. So this is really close to negative one. So just below negative one or just less than negative one. What are some ways um, in which the tangent function is similar to sine and cosine? So the tangent function um, is also periodic, just like sine and cosine. So they're both periodic. Um, and the tangent function, just like sine and cosine, the input is angles. So you input angles into the function. just like you input angles into sine and cosine. So we would do like sine of pi or cosine of three pi over two. Same with tangent, the input is angles and you get back a ratio. So what are some ways that the tangent function is different? Well, um, it's period or when it repeats itself is pi this time instead of sine and cosine are two pi, tangents period is pi. Um, Tangent also can give back any number. So its range is all real numbers. Where sine and cosine, um, their range is between negative one and zero. So they can only kick back negative one to, uh, sorry, negative one to one. So sine and cosine's range is negative one to one. Tangents is all real numbers. And then the domain of tangent, um, excludes different values. So the domain um, is not all real numbers where sine and cosine is. So tangent has some vertical asymptotes. So places in its domain are angles that you can't plug in. You can plug every angle into sine and cosine. There are some that you cannot in tangent. Number seven, match the trig expressions with their graphs. Um, so instead of just putting them next to here, I'll just write them on to here. So when we're looking at this, one thing that I look at is um, the midline. So I go through and kind of look at the midline in each of these. So look for the middle of these functions. So the between the top and bottom or the mins and the maxes, and that'll help you kind of isolate um, 
some of these functions. So these midlines here, the midline is negative three. Here it's negative two, negative two, negative three. Um, so that narrows me down. Um, if the midline is negative three for graph one, that means it's either B or D. So I'm just going to put one next to these. And then graph four also has a midline of negative three. So B and D are either graph number one or graph number four. And then um, the midline of negative two would be with graph two or three. So then that kind of just narrows down my options. Then when we take a look at the amplitude, okay, so how tall is this? So this one has a height of two. Um, so the amplitude is two for graph one. So when we look at these ones, here's graph one, okay, and the amplitude is two, that's the same. And then this one starts at a midline. So when it starts at a midline, it's a sine function. So when it starts on the midline, it's a sine function. So that means that this is D. Amplitude of two, midline of negative three, sine function because it starts at its midline. So that one's graph number one. That means that graph number four is for B, right? So it's got a midline of negative three. It's got an amplitude of two and it starts at a maximum, meaning a cosine function. So then this would be B. Then when we take a look at graph two and three, so again, um, these both have amplitudes of three and we can see that here. So I'm gonna decide sine or cosine functions. So graph two starts at a maximum. So graph two is a cosine function. So graph two is the cosine function A and graph three is the sine function C.